Okay, so it's uh, August. So uh, this is our program meeting, and uh, I guess, uh, do we have any business to talk about? Well, first we have a guest, Lupe, and uh, where this club's been around since the 1930s. And currently we're on one days we'll get back to meeting in person. Uh, but you're welcome to visit our meetings and join if you like. And then uh, anybody uh, have any 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 news of any kind? Penny's not here with any field trip information. But I think was there there was a field trip in the galleon. Yeah. So uh, I confess I don't remember what it was. I'm a I'm on the verge of taking my own field trip to Chicago. So uh, uh, does anyone want to recant? Are you, recant what the, are you inviting us to join you? Uh, yeah, if you want to help your mom, go ahead. Sure. Oh, sure. Okay. Yeah, I can stay here. You can have my ticket. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, well, anyway, so. Uh, I confess, I don't remember what that field trip was. I forgot the penny. Was I think it. it's uh, to go it's to swap the meet. baseball for the swap meet. Or something so, yeah, the swap meet. Yeah, it's, it's, the, it's the slow uh, swap meet on Sunday, whatever the date was. I think yeah, it was exactly. the 22nd, right? August. <laughs> and I think it was. But I am here. Okay. It is. Uh, Okay, give me one second if I take it. Yeah, yeah it's, uh, it's about August 22, Sunday, 8 in the morning, I go to San Luis Obispo to swap meet next to the Sunset Drive to make some picture about that. You see, you find every uh, detail on the Galleon. Okay. I sent to you, that I sent to everyone the other day. And I'll just say that I've been to the swap meet a couple of times and uh, it's pretty low key. It's not like the one in Napoma. It's much smaller. And yeah. I walked around with the camera, no hassles, no nothing. In fact, I uh, ran into our <coughs> club, Glenn, and he was buying stuff. I was a field trip with uh, another group. But um, anyway, it's a great place. There's like all this junk that people have sitting on their tables is like uh, still lives, and then there are all the people roaming around, and so it's a, it's a, it's a pretty low key thing, and it only costs a dollar to get in. So, uh, anyway, uh, do we have any other uh, information about anything? We have, we put off our board meeting. Oh. Yes. Well, I want to talking about field trips. Um, Penny is planning the November field trip to Vegas and surrounding areas. I'm just wondering if anybody uh, here is planning to go on that because I'm considering it. And I'm just she's looking. I know that she was asking for info on exactly what people wanted to do when they went there and the date. So anyone else interested in that? Maybe I haven't decided. A long time Not for sure. Okay. I guess we'll keep talking offline about it. I just was, I, I'm more curious, more interested in the places around Vegas than I am in Vegas, but I've also got a couple of friends to visit and maybe I'd like to spend part of the time in Vegas, but maybe more time in the <clears throat> parks that are from there. So I don't know. I guess we'll just have to keep talking about it. So Flavio and, and Jim are uh -huh, interested. Maybe. Yeah. I, I, it, Depends on scheduling. That's that's for me. That's too far in advance to really. Yeah. Especially the way things are going. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So Frank, um, uh, you had something you'd like to uh, add? What was that? Frank. Oh uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, on the twenty eighth of this month, uh, Las Flores Ranch is having a star watching party. It's a Saturday night. Cameron Diaz and uh, Clint yeah, there you go. And... <laughs> I don't what is know the... how. Um, What's the date of that, Frank? The 28th of this month. Okay. So last Saturday of the month. Uh -huh. Oh, nice. What time do you know? I think they open at uh, at 7 and it'll probably go till 
10 or so. Not too much star watching at 7, really. No, no, it's just to get in there and set up. I don't know really how how uh, photography friendly it's going to be out there. I went on a on a night hike there last <clears> night, <throat> and there were a lot of kids along, and uh, yeah. so <laughs> I I really don't know how this is going to turn out, but I plan on going. Yeah, seven is the drinking warm up. Seven, bring, it, <laughs> bring along. Make sure you have enough for everybody. <laughs> I might be interested in that. I'll, I'll check out my calendar. Yeah, you can go on to uh, uh, the City of Santa Maria Parks and Rec Department's website. Uh, waning gibbous moon at 61.4%. So it's not ideal for star watching. No. Ideally, you want to go there on the, um, the full moon, which is um, 22nd. You mean the new moon? Yes, sorry, that's that's the new moon. You want the full moon, moon which is the. Unfortunately, <clears throat> they only open uh, uh, night once a month during the summer. That's it. So it's kind of a. So, so Sean, are you going to are, are host a camel watching? <laughs> All right. <laughs> it's got a satisfied grin. <laughs> Hey, okay, so for the uh, board meeting, are we we're putting that off till September? Um, I think so. Oh, uh, I I have to. Um, uh, hopefully next week I'll kind of regroup myself and I'll uh, come up with some da possible dates. And the problem with the last one was that we sent a new date and then Rosie couldn't be there, so we need Rosie there. So I will, uh, I will reassess that next week and hopefully we'll come up with a, um, a date. Okay. But all of okay. those of you who are on the board, I'll get back with you. Then Cheryl, did you want me to run the meeting, uh, the competition meeting still? If you would, please, I will be gone. Then I will be out of the country then. Okay. I'll, I'll be out of, I'll be out of state, but I'll be in the, I'll be in the country. <laughs> uh, so. Okay, but sure, it's going to be easier for you. I will try okay. to join, but I know, I just don't know. Yeah, well, I, if you if you go out of the country, Cheryl, you better take a proof of vaccination with you because you may not be able to get back in without it. Yes, I'm quite aware of that. It's pretty interesting traveling abroad these days. Yeah. Okay, so. Do we have any uh, other announcements of any type? Uh, without further ado, let's begin our program. <laughs> and so uh, our special assignment, uh, and I I was kind of hoping we'd had the board meeting behind us, but uh, our special assignment will be uh, for our special competition this year will be uh, photo books like we did last year. And have we decided, are we going to present them in January, show them in January or judge them in January uh, rather than December? Have, is that decided? What, what we, I don't know what's been decided, but what we did last year, we had a deadline of December 31 mm -hmm. to submit. And then um, we had to, we had a judge. And so we had to have time to um, get them to the judge and have him uh, judge them. So that was about the first week or so. I don't remember the exact dates. That was the first week in uh, uh, January where I got the books uh, to, to Cam Jacoby, who was our judge. And then uh, I think he took seven days or something like that. So I think what, what we will do, um, well, I have to figure it out, but um, we're, we're probably uh, not, we, we don't want to uh, present the, um, the the results of the judges work on um, the program night. We want to have a, a, a night uh, by itself. So I, I, I don't know if we showed the, um, if, we, if we showed the results in the, I think it was in the February meeting uh, uh, program. It meeting. was, yeah, February yeah, also. You. So, so, so it won't, wouldn't be until February. Uh, we don't normally have a program in January anyway. Right, right, exactly. Uh, well, have we decided it's going to be uh, uh, 
two books per person, three books? We, we, we said uh, we've always had a maximum of three. Right. Okay. So you could do one, two, or three. Okay. And but not four. Any subject and any size and, uh, the, the, the general, <laughs> yeah, the general guidelines is there. There are no guidelines except that, um, we, uh, would have a minimum of 25 photos. I think I've said 25 pages, but, uh, it's really, uh, 25 photos. Okay. Uh, so, you know, handmade, you know, as long as it's your work, you know, that's, that's the only, it has to be your work. Mm. And, um, you could, you could even, well, you, you should make the book yourself. Uh, uh, I think that was implied, although it was never stated. Mm -hmm. It should be your work and your, uh, on both the photos and the book. Well, that would mean, for example, that you would, uh, I mean, you could, you could, uh, download a template or if, uh, someone like Shutterfly, you sent them the pictures, they put together the book. Is that acceptable? Sure. Yes. Because, um, uh, you know, I make blurb books, so, um. T Tony, on the other hand, has made some handmade books. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, we don't expect you to go out and spend, you know, twenty thousand dollars to make a book with a book publisher. Um, you know, make it whatever whatever way you want. Mm -hmm. um, but making it yourself doesn't imply that you have to physically, you know, put it uh, put it together. You could put it off to Blurb or. Um, you know, <laughs> There's a lot of companies. Whatever. <laughs> yeah. Cheryl, Cheryl, when when you cough, why don't you mute yourself before you yes, cough? So, um, yeah. Okay. So, um, yeah, I've never made a book. I guess maybe I will. I've never done it myself. You should. Yeah, you should. I was going to go on Lightroom and I was going to go into the book module just to share what it looks like and, and how to, you know, simply put something together. Mm -hmm. But apparently I'm not going to be able to do that this time because I can't get my computer to work. Right. Um, I did not know that Lightroom could put together a book. I put all my books together in Lightroom. If you look on the top, you know, how you've got develop and library. Yeah. There's a tab that says book. Wow. And if you go to that tab that says book, I wish I could share. You can share mine. Um, yeah, I could share Ron's screen. Sure. Um, I don't have a book in there, but I could show you how to do it. Why don't you do that? Now? Just let me know when you're ready then. Ready. 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 Yikes. Let me see. Um, She's the blind. I, I, I don't know. It's Ron's library of photos. So I should have Ron do it. He knows how to do it. Okay. Because I had mine set up to do mine, but. And I did go up to the top and I found what you were talking about, um, Jim. Uh -huh. And when I increased the volume, that's when I disappeared completely. Hmm. And then. Uh, I lost the menu bar up there, went away completely. Well, um, anyway, uh, why don't we get together sometime after this, uh, and I'll send out an invite and maybe we can work through it. Yeah, that, that would work better than oh, a night okay. like this. Yeah. Uh, actually, maybe Tony could be involved in that too, since he's a Mac person and I'm not. Strange. Tony, would that be okay? Sure. Yeah. Okay. Oh, that's a good way to do it. Just I need to show them the. Well, I'm not. I, I don't have access yet. I think. Uh, I think the library problem is, is, is logged onto the internet. Or the, disparate parts. He's using a different yeah. monitor and a. And this yeah. Media yeah. And, you know, everything is. You know. Yeah. yeah. Just go on until we're ready and and we'll let you know when he finds what he wants to share. 
Yeah, I thought we were at a silent movie. <laughs> <laughs> he wasn't planning to do this. Okay. I had mine all set up. Well, um, then anybody else have something they uh, uh, anything that they want to show on on the books? I I'm not sure what Elaine was going to do, but I can show you. Okay. Ron's on, but he should be ready. Okay. I'm still not getting that. You don't have to have that to share your screen. Just share your screen. And, and share, share it with share it with video uh, or, or motion or whatever. What? Minimize your screen. Okay. Now go up to get your whole thing. My whole thing. And say share. Share. And there should be a an option where you can share with the video share and motion. Screen. Okay. Well, it's no video, is it? Or like motion, it's... whatever it is. But yeah, we don't have we don't have sound. We can talk while it's up, can't we? And yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's like are you in classic. Well, I would have just shared my screen and then you can open it. You've got it minimized, right? Yeah. And then, then you can just open there it. There we go. And then um you can you see it? Yes. Yeah. Okay, so if you look at the the tabs across the top here, you can see where it says book. And yeah. if you go to book, then um, you click this box down here, and it'll show you all these. Um, it'll show you the whole the view of everything. The wow. if, you just that wanna see, if you want to see a double spread, you pick which one and you you click on there. Mm -hmm. And then, if you want to see a single page, you just do that. Now, collections. Um, this is a how we do this is we first put a bunch of pictures into a collection, and mm -hmm. name your folder with a bunch of pictures that you want to use, and then um, they'll appear down here. All the pictures down here are the pictures that you put in your collection. Then if you wanted to put a picture in your, your book, um, I usually have all these open, but there's a thing here that says page. You just, you can go to where you want to add a page. I'll say, I want to add a page here. You add a page or you can add two pages and it usually gives you the same page setup that you had in the previous page. But if you want to change that, you just go. Oh, I can't see for his. There's a place up here where you um, do your page setup and how many pages you want. There it is. You can pick, you know, how many pages you want or a single page. Anyway, it's real easy. Then once you get your page, you just take a picture and I drag it in. You just drag it in. Drag and drop. So, drag and drop. Then if you don't, you change your mind, you just so, so you, photo. So this has, uh, you can choose page layouts with both photos and text, I would assume. Yeah, yeah. there's a, yeah, there's all your photo boxes uh -huh. and they're customizable. You can right. grab and you can change the size. And want and, to and um, and then when you're finished, there's a little place down here that says. Send to blurb. Okay. So oh. what I'm going to do is click that and it'll go straight to blurb. And you're, I mean, it's, it's easy. So, um, so you had, um, you had a collection, <laughs> so you put the photos that you want. To right in the book, you put them into a collection. So over here, you can see it says collections. Right. If you go to library, it'll take you out of the book. Uh -huh. Here's the, here's the regular library, and then down here is collections. So you just would say add a new folder, mm -hmm. give it a name, and then in your catalog, you can just you know send it. Put as many pictures as you want in your collection. Right. They're virtual copies. Mm -hmm. 
And then um, they're just organized in a way where you can um, have them all ready to drag into your pages. Are you still there? Yeah. Okay. So, um, so, so you have to, you basically set up the templates, the page layout templates that you want to use. Yes. You, um, put your photos into a collection. Then you click on the book um, uh, uh, tab at the top. Up here, right. And, uh, Actually, you do the collection first. Oh, you click collection first. Okay. Yeah. And so when you click on the book, does it automatically propagate everything for you? Or do you um, have to? You see can. Yeah. There's a place, if you want to, you can tell it to automatically put all your pictures in a book. Mm -hmm. And it will just do it randomly, I guess. I've right, never tried right, it. Right, right. And, and, and then you can rearrange those if you don't like the way it did it automatically. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's easier, though, just to, to look through your pictures down here. You can make this bigger. Uh, right. And drag them and drop drag them. Drag them. And then you can move them around and play with them. Mm -hmm. And um, and then you want to save your book. And, but if you don't save it, it'll be here when you, it automatically kind of just keeps them like this. But um, once you save it, then it, this is here, if you look up here, it says unsaved book. Okay. So if you wanted to save this, where is the place to save it? I don't remember. On the right, I think, top right. Uh, is that a safe book underneath where it says book? No, that's clear book. Yeah. Oh, create a safe book. Create a saved book. Yeah, you would click that, and it will save it for you. Uh, it doesn't mean you can't change it, but if you don't want to use blurbs, um, you can go to other publishers and uh, you can create a book. And their their templates are similar. I've used Bookwright, and it was very similar to this. And I imagine other ones are, you know, work in a similar way. But the beauty of Lightroom is, even if you're not ready to make a book, you can just play with stuff in your Lightroom catalog. And then when you're ready to save it, um, you know, you can save it. And then up here. You have options. You have your book settings up here. You can pick out what size you want your book. And you can pick out your, you know, the, the kind of cover you want and um, the kind of papers that you want. And they'll give you a running total of how much it's going to cost you. And all but that's, yeah, that's, that's from Blurb. From yeah. Blurb, yeah. But this is kind of designed to work with Blurb. So let's suppose you uh, create a book uh, that is, um, oh, let's say let's say it's a nine inch by nine inch square, and then you decide you want to actually make a larger book with the same photos. Yes. That's uh, twelve by thirteen, or pick a number. Um, can you just change the dimensions of the book, or do you have to? Um, you you can import and import. You can, no, you can change your dimensions and you can go to Lightroom and change the dimensions and change your mind, but it's going to change your layout. It's going to look different and not well, fit yeah. correctly. And you're going to have to you know basically start from scratch. Right, right. You'll have some cleanup to do. So it's probably better to, if you wanted to do that, to just start from scratch. Yeah, that would probably be easier. Right. Because I have run into that before, and then I did one where um, I picked a lay flat book. I wanted a lay flat book because I had a lot of two page spreads, and um, I didn't realize that with if you don't select the correct paper, you you won't get a lay flat book. You have right, to right. make sure you correct the select the yeah, correct. That. The, 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 for lay flat, you have to have a certain paper weight and all that. Yeah, which stuff. makes sense. Sure. But, you know, I just thought it would do it automatically. I didn't realize. Well, those, those I've heard that those lay flat books um, fall apart after a little while. Yeah, I'm not really 
that disappointed that I didn't get the <laughs> that book because I think I, I preferred the regular pages, the regular paper. So how do you get text in there? Okay, so to get text, um, if you look at, let me get, well, let me go to this. Where are you going? You just threw up my book. If you look down here, it says add photo text. Yeah. Yeah. So if you click on that, all you got to do is start typing and it'll type, it'll put a box right here and type under there. Well, However, if you want a. You have to pick the right kind of page if you want text. Yeah, and then what you can, well, you you can do photo text like that. And then there's a place over here that says text. And then it gives you all your options of what font you want to use, how big you want it, all that. You just have to look at all of these tabs where all of your controls are. But if you want to um, actually have a lot of text, like if I wanted to write a whole bunch in here, then there's another text that says, um, page text and you can you can add it from some modules i can't remember where they are like right here yeah there's a little box here that says you could check that for if i did that i could check this box that says page text that's photo text that's yeah. photo text okay i'll click i can't read everything i'm far away from that side of the computer and he's got everything really tiny <laughs> but you would click check this little page text box and then you could just start typing in here but there's templates for the for the layout but there's also templates that's one way to do it or you can just go to page and then um change the template yeah his he's got his set up so much different there over here you have your three photos two photos one photo and then you keep going down and you can have text pages and it'll give you different options for your text pages if and you want to do it that way. And for those templates, you can customize them, right? Yes. So for both you, text and photo. Correct. You can okay. take and customize them, make them bigger, skinnier, um, and, you know, change your fonts and does it, does I, I rarely use them the way they come. I usually change them. So, um, one of the questions happens uh, that comes up is you've chosen a photo um, uh, layout and um, you have to, to, to properly print the photo, you have to have a certain minimum resolution. So, if you, yes. if you, so chose, a, if you chose uh, in blurb, if you put a photo in that was below the minimum resolution, it would warn you. What yeah. Happens, what happens in uh, in light? If you do it here, like if I take an image and I just, um, I hate this isn't my book, so I hate to mess it all up on him. Yeah, well, yeah if you screw it up, you're gonna. Let me get a new page. Okay, let's play with. I'll just take a picture. I'll put that one. I'll put this one in here. Okay, now if I click up here, I can zoom in. Mm -hmm. I, just, I just want this like right right in here okay you see the little warning that popped up okay so okay it gave me a warning saying okay it's a little bit too big and if i click that it's gonna say this but, photo may not print well at this size but but you're getting a message from lightroom correct the problem is when you send this off to um to uh, blurb, blurb. then yeah. um, it, you know if I was doing it in blurb and I dropped a low resolution file in it would tell me right off so, right this so and if it but I haven't had a problem if things work in Lightroom and I don't get the warning in Lightroom then I haven't had a problem when I've gone to blurb I haven't had any warnings so so you don't know that um I'm, yes you do you do Okay, that's what I needed to know. Yeah. These templates come from Blurb. So they go warn you exactly the same as if you're on the Blurb book right. Okay, yeah. okay, that's what yeah, I needed is, to know. That's good to know. Yeah, these are designed to, basically it's designed to send to Blurb. And um, it, it works very well. It communicates very well with Blurb. If you wanted to use a different publisher, 
then you pro you would want to use their own publishing okay, but, software. But, but do you get that uh, resolution warning before you send before you try to send it to Blur? As soon as you drop the photo in. Okay, yeah. that's yeah. Oh, yeah. See, did you notice the warning that I got right here? Up here, this corner. Right. That's my warning. Right, but that that but but that could be from um, that could be from Lightroom. It, it not necessarily from uh, from from Blurb. No, it's basically telling you that if you want to print that in a Blurb mm -hmm. book, that it's not going to it might not print well. Right, right. That's basically what that's telling you. Okay, so so there so there's an active communication or either that or Blurb or, or um, Lightroom has uh, some. Um, Algorithms from blurb to know to tell you these. To yeah, give they warnings. they must because it's it's worked seamlessly for me. Right. I've never had a an issue with anything like that. Okay. And then you don't have to worry about um, profiles and make you know what my pictures have looked like on my screen. They've printed like as long as my monitor's calibrated and okay. you know, it's I've always had real good results with the printing. Very good. So, yeah, I'm real happy using, for me, I've, like I said, I've used BookWrite also for Blurb because I've never really used another publisher. And I just, they're different. They're not, one's not better than the other, but they're a little bit different. Mm -hmm. And I like Lightroom because I work in Lightroom all the time and it's just so convenient to be able to, you know, I have some, books that I have created. I have some collections that have sat there for a couple years and I might decide not to publish them and I might decide I do want to publish them. Well, they're ready for me when I'm ready to publish them. Yeah. Well, they're you can do that in, you do that in blurb too. You just, yeah. you know, just save the book and, and don't publish it. Right. But, um, it's just, this has just been very convenient for me. Yeah. And I thought other people, if they're using Lightroom, might not know about that capability. And it, it does work very well. Very good. And so if, if that's what somebody needs to get themselves going, you know, just, you don't have to download anything new. All you got to do is go into your Lightroom catalog and start playing with it. And, you can, you, got an old and you can start creating a book right away. It's, mm -hmm. you know, there's nothing to download. It's right there. Mm -hmm. Very good. So. Thank you. That was very informative. That's, that's yeah. book making in a nutshell. That, yeah. That's, and that's, Lightroom. Like, Cyril, like Harold said, that's very informative, Elaine. Good. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks. Uh, yeah. I, hope it, I hope it helps. Anybody that, that's, else? That's really interesting to me. I think I, if I were to do a book, I might just do it that way because I'm already working in Lightroom. It just makes it seem well, so. Well, that's so many of us are already using. Stop sharing. It's... Go to up in the top, up there. Stop sharing, right there. Yeah, so many of us are in using Lightroom already, and you know, for me, you know, a dummy with doing things with photos i just found it so easy to do it that way so if i can do it anybody can do it it's it's, it's really not hard <laughs> and you you know just you have to just get in there and play with it there's i usually have all those drop down <laughs> menus open so i don't have to hunt for anything i just so all the information is right there so you're saying that lightroom has a uh, how to make a book for dummies yeah okay <laughs> That works for me. <laughs> Lots of tutorials on it. Yeah, there's yeah. tutorials. The only thing that I would suggest is um, it's it's good to have a second pair of eyes because I always make these little mistakes. Yeah. And uh, it's real easy to, you know, just to do some silly things. So just to have another pair of eyes and on a proof. And then when you send it over to Blurb, you also have the option to preview your book. Mm -hmm. In blurb. In blurb. So yeah. once you send it from Lightroom to blurb, you're going to get a, a book made. You don't have to order it. You don't have to pay for it, but you're going to get to see what your blurb book would look like and you can preview it and go through each page. So I would suggest that you make sure you do that before you click buy. <laughs> Whatever. Well, so when you, but uh, when you get over to blurb, so you, 
you've pushed your book over to Blurb. Mm -hmm. Now you obviously have to have a Blurb account to do that. Yeah. Well. And 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 then you come. So then you can go back into your Blurb account at some point in the future, and you can just order your books um, through through Blurb. Yeah. Right. Can you can you modify those books through Blurb? No. No. Okay. So all the modification has to, you have to go back to Lightroom. I have to go back to Lightroom and I would have to resend the book and then I would delete the old one. Right. But if you didn't delete the old one, you would get two copies there. You would get the old copy and the new copy. Correct. Okay. Yep. I'm guessing so. Yeah. Yep. Very good. I've done that. I've had two copies and then yeah. I just delete one. Very good, Elaine. Yep. It's real easy. Can you, uh, no excuses. <laughs> Can you kind of oh, and the other thing is, Blurb always has sales. So once your book is ready and you have it sitting there in Blurb, watch the sales before you order it. You you can expect to have thirty and forty percent off pretty pretty regularly, wouldn't you say, Jim? Um, well, thirty percent is much more common. Uh, yeah, uh, and you you might get two or three. Um, uh, um, notifications for 30% um, a month. Um, and, and the 40%, I, I, I haven't done any stats on it, but 40% is less frequent maybe once yeah. a month or once every month and a half or, you know, or if they have some special like Mother's Day or something like that. Uh, and, and then on, uh, you might get the 40%. Uh, then on more, um, uh, more rare circumstances, they'll they'll send you a fifty percent offer, fifty percent off. Yeah, right. sometimes they do thirty five and, and right. free shipping. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, but the, the point is, don't just pay a hundred percent because no, no. usually you don't have to wait long to get some kind of an offer. And right. I don't get notifications. I usually just have to go in and sign in and see what's going on. Yeah, well, they, if you're on their email list, they will send they will push out emails oh, okay. to you. Um, but one thing too, um, blurb. Uh, you have to once you get it over to blurb. You have to order the book. You have to buy the book within fourteen days or fifteen days, something like that, or they will delete it, and you'll have to republish it. So that's something to keep in mind. Yeah. But yeah, you still have it. Alive on your Lightroom catalog, so it's it's easy sure, just to sure. send it back again. Sure. <laughs> I mean that's the beauty of having it right there. Okay. Anybody else? Thanks. Well, Jim, I have a question for you. You've done books and blurb. How do you do them? Well, okay. So, um, what what we just saw from Elaine is. Uh, very similar to how you do it in Blurb because I, I published all my books in Blurb. Um, and the, the, the differences are, well, first of all, you, you, um, you, have, you have to download the Blurb BookWrite uh, software onto your computer, and then you start um, building your book using that software. Um, you have templates, you have book sizes, you have paper sizes, all, all the things that, uh, that Elaine talked about. Um, and, but instead of a catalog, uh, what I do is I create a folder because I use, um, I use uh, uh, Photoshop. I create a folder on my hard drive and then I drop the files into that folder that I'm going to, uh, the files that I'm going to use for the book. And then you go to Blurb, uh, to the Blurb BookWrite software, and there is a uh, an option to import uh, images. So that's and it's that's basically a drag and drop or a select and you know import all kind of thing. Um, and um, you you design your pages. Um, they don't have any. I guess they do. I've never used it, but I guess they do have pre-existing template. Well, they have they have templates that you can that you can uh, customize for both text and uh, photos. Um, and uh, so basically it's a very similar process to what Elaine is doing. Um, and I used BookWrite one time. Yeah. Well, and, made... and when and then 
they have um, in the bookmaking process, they have a button to preview the book. So at any point, you can preview the book to see what it looks like and then decide that you want to make changes or whatever. Uh, and you do that through however, however many iterations um, that, uh, that, that you require. And then um, they have a, a, another button in the uh, software that says publish. And when you do that, it takes the, um, all, all the information, creates an, uh, an XML file and transmits it up to uh, the blurb um, uh, website. Uh, and that, that depends on how long, your, how, how large your book is. That can take 10 minutes, 15 minutes. Uh, it's not a long time. And then um, you'll be able to go up onto the blurb site and you, um, uh, you edit the book on the blurb site. You put in certain information like the title of the book, uh, the, um, uh, what languages, what language it's in, uh, key, uh, keywords, um, description of, the, of what the book is, decide whether you want a hard bound, a hard cover or a soft cover, what size you want. Uh, do you want a dust cover or do you want, want what they call image wrap uh, for, the, for the cover? And then um, uh, you can set a price and um, uh, that kind of thing for sa sales information. In, and then um, you can decide if you want to publish it or not. Um, and if you decide not to publish it, or even if you decide to publish it, they provide a link that you can copy and you can uh, then send that link out to people uh, so that they can do a, like a private viewing. In other words, you're not putting it up for public viewing, um, uh, that kind of thing. So it's, you know, it's pretty nice. Um, and that's, you know, that's, that's basically it. What you saw Elaine do is pretty much, there's an analog for, uh, for that in, uh, in Blurb. Wow. And it, it's, you know, uh, yeah, it, it, it's, it's pretty easy. I, I send out, uh, I send out the link to my books to certain people that want to know about it, or uh, I just had a, a, a person buy one of my books. Um, but the thing is, that they're very expensive. So, you know, uh, a hundred page book is going to cost you 140, 150 bucks. Wow. So that's why the discounts are important. So, <laughs> so, so um, and I'll show you uh, a couple that I've done. If, Let's see. Yeah. yeah. Um, so hang on, let me get myself set up here for a second. Okay. Um, so I did, um, I'll show you two, two books. One of them is, um, the first one I'll show is of, a, of an exhibition catalog. Uh, uh, Paul Blyden, who you remember, judged for us. Mm -hmm. um, he and I uh, uh, created, did a couple, uh, put on a couple uh, photo shows down in San Pedro at the uh, Loft Gallery. And um, I made uh, uh, exhibition catalogs for both of those shows. And um, so I'll show you the, um, the exhibition catalog for the uh, 2013 show that we put on. Um, and what we did is we sent out uh, uh, invitations to various photographers uh, to, uh, who might want to participate in it. In the 2012, uh, we had two parts to it. We had uh, local photographers, and then I sent out a list uh, I sent out an email to uh, international photographers and we got five or six, I, I forget how many we had, maybe 10 international photographers plus a, some local photographers participate in that part of the, of the exhibition. And we had it in, in, the, uh, in the gallery, we had the, the main gallery was the local artists and the smaller gallery was the, uh, was the international uh, portraits that we, that we did. Um, so let me, uh, Let's see, share. Let's see. Automatic optimize. What is this? Optimize for text, optimize for motion. I think that's what we're going to want. Okay. 
Now I've got to be able to find it. I think we can go here. Um, let's see. <coughs> Let me make this a little smaller. Um, My project's blurb. Where, where am I? I'm missing it. I'm not seeing it. It's two tabs along from the one you got open. Hang on. Let me get this. The, my, the, the thing came down. Oh, here we are. Yeah. yeah. It, was, it, was, it was covered up. Okay. So let's see here. I can find it, 2013 California Open Exhibition. I think this is it here. Preview. Let's see if this will actually work. <laughs> it, it's not found, so that's not right. Um, try this one. Huh, that's interesting. You gotta log in, I think. Oh, 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 good idea. Let okay, so hang on. Um let me uh, stop sharing. I forgot I thought I was logged in. Um sharing. Okay, I'm gonna mute myself and uh So, Elaine, if, if I wanted to publish with a different publisher, how would I do that? Do I need to download their software and add it into? Like, yeah, you would use different software, but you could still take all if you had created a collection in Lightroom, at least you would have all your pitches organized in a collection, which you could you could, you know, export those those photos. You wouldn't be able to export a book created in Lightroom, but you would, you know, cause I've done that too. And you have to use different software, but at least my pictures were all organized and I knew what I wanted to use. So, okay. I always start in Lightroom for that reason, just cause it's easy for me to think and figure out what I want to use. <laughs> well, I think I would do it with Lightroom and Blurb just to start. Cause I don't really know anything else, but I was just curious. Yeah. Well, I will say that I have used uh, Mixbook and I think Shutterfly. Um, they're uh, both a little bit less expensive um, and they're just as intuitive and easy to use. So um, you can't pull off, of course, directly off of Lightroom, but you simply drag and drop into the program, into the program once it's open. So, hmm. yeah. Yeah, Blurb is probably not the cheapest when they're they're on sale they're a little bit better but you know they are pricey but i like blurb okay so all the swearing you didn't hear any of that did you no <laughs> okay <laughs> we've been sitting um, here with our fingers in our ears <laughs> Uh, okay, so let me uh, let me try it again here. But first, you don't succeed. Yeah. <laughs> Optimize for motion. Okay, so this one should be it right here. There we go. Uh, let me get some of this stuff out of the way here. Okay, so this is the California Open Show Exhibition Catalog, like I told you. Um, so we'll bring that up. This is the pre. This is how you preview work in blurb. Let me make it a full screen here. Um, okay. Um, let me get this out of the way here. I don't know if it bothers you or not, but it's in my way. So we can't see it. Yeah. Okay. It, but it just gets in my way. So, um, so, you know, just a standard, what it is, et cetera, and some information, um, uh, about the exhibition, which you don't have to read. Um, and then I, I arranged these, uh, I forgot, forgot how I arranged them. I, I don't know if I made them in 
Now, I didn't make them in alphabetic order, but anyway, so uh, uh, designed the web, you know, the page layouts and all of that, and then put each photographer's uh, photos in. Some photographers obviously had uh, more than uh, one uh, one uh, book or one photo selected. We we actually had a we had a juror for this show also, so it wasn't just Paul and I selecting the the photos. Um, so, they look really low resolution. Uh, I, I don't know. Uh, it may be my screen, or it may be it. It's it may be it may be the blurb um, way they present it. I don't. Yeah, don't that's know. what I, that's what I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so anyway, um, I'll just flip through this. The um, we had a guy uh, in the. Uh, Pata group that I was uh, down in the South Bay, uh, uh, and his this is one of his photos, Earl Veets. Um, he was about, he must have been 75, 77, something like that, when he climbed Mount Fuji in Japan. And uh, it was, uh, I thought that was a pretty good feat for a guy that was his age. He ended up, um, unfortunately, falling and hitting his head, and he died uh, uh, a, a couple of years ago, he was a really, really good photographer. So mo most of these, uh, a lot of these photographers I know personally. Here's Bob Francis. Yep. Who 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 we've met. Yep. And uh, here's more, more of his scanner work. work. Yeah, more of his scanner work, exactly. Yeah. This is uh, 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 Alan probably recognizes this. Oh yeah. The beam. Yeah, recognize it. Yeah. Yeah. See it from your mother's apartment, can't you? Uh, almost, but not quite. <laughs> yeah. So, um, anyway, so, you know, so this is just, the, you know, the catalog. Um, like I said, it was one of the, wasn't the first, well, actually I'd made a couple of blurred books before I, before I made these, um, you can see there's all variety. It was an open show, as I said, so there was no theme. Um, this this woman, Janet Milholm, she's quite an amazing uh, photographer. This this is her very early work. Uh, she has this is 2013, so in the last eight years, she has just blossomed. It's amazing work that she does. So anyway. I'll just go through these. Marion, I know Marion. She lives back in uh, back in uh, New Jersey, uh, Montpelier or something like that in 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 New Jersey. She's a good photographer too. Karen Schuneman is a uh, she started a wildlife uh, photography uh, business and she does ex she does uh, safaris and that type of thing now. She's had work in um, she's had work in the British Museum. So that will give you an idea of the quality of her work. Michael Weisman does work uh, mostly with large format and alternative process uh, uh, work. This is this is not a large format because this is from the bell tower at uh, at the. Um, Oh, I can't remember the name of it now. Uh, uh, Giorgio San Maggiore, uh, Maggiore Island, which is, this is Venice across here. And this is on the island across from Venice. And uh, you can't get a view camera up there. And, and this was, he was basically hanging out of the bell tower when he took this. <laughs> okay, so that's that. Yeah. Um, now let's go back here. I'll show you one other. This is a book here that I did with um, two other photographers uh, when we went. It, uh, it's called uh, it's called Reflections of Venice. Let's see if it comes up. Um, Melinda. Isaacs and Melinda and Jan are friends of mine. Jan, uh, four years ago, died of um, colon cancer, but um, Melinda Melinda designed the the cover on this. Um, let's make it full screen. 
so what we did was um, this was we made this from our after our second trip to Venice and um, blurb is not multi-user so uh, we had to each of us had to download the software onto uh, the bookwrite software onto our computers and then we had to build our own book um, and then um, they, and they were living in Geneva at the time and so um, what uh, and and we, we said um, that each each of us had the exclusive uh, right to how we put our book together we had some general outline but we were responsible for doing all the editing and uh, we had the final say on on uh, what photos went into our portion of the book. And uh, when we we're ready, when we had all of our books ready, they um, tr uh, transferred their, uh, their book file to me. And I wrote a, a program uh, in uh, uh, basically a batch program in DOS to combine all the books instead of having to go through and copy all the text and uh, export the files and rebuild the book. So it worked out uh, pretty well and saved us a lot of time. So, and I'm what, impressed it, that you can that you're a programmer. Yeah, well, it it, it lucky for me it was pretty easy to do. <laughs> uh, and what we did was um, we divided this up into uh, three sections, and you'll see that in a minute. So here, here's our introduction. Um, and um, so this is just, you know, the book is Reflections of Venice. So the intro to it is just some reflections that each, from ph photos that each of us have made. Uh, uh, these, these photos here, these two are from Jan, who is really good at making uh, photos of reflections. Uh, and uh, I think that was Jan also. And this one with the broom is, is mine. Um, and so what we did, we started, uh, with, I got the first section and we, you know, the, the photographer's name and then a little uh, story uh, on it. And I, I can't read that right now, but my screen's so small. But anyway, um, and then we just put our, our photos in. <clears throat> um, what I decided to do was at the first part of this, I decided to pair images of the performers uh, on, 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 on each page, but then I, uh, when I got into it further, um, you know, I changed that around this, this mime has been there for forever. I I've seen him every year for the last 10 years, 10, 12 years. He was going there a lot long, a lot more, a uh, lot he was going there for many more years than I had attended. <clears throat> It works really well the way they're paired. I like that. Yeah, yeah. It's it's if you have pairs, it you know um, it, it does it does sequence really well, you know. And and then this is where I departed from the pairing. Although this this both of these are views from uh, the Rialto Bridge. And they're really matched well to each other. Yeah. Yeah. That laundry again. Yeah, you've seen this one. This is the color version of the black and of the monochrome. <laughs> um, this is a this is a one of the performers. Her name is um, um, her name is uh, Solange, and uh, uh, she comes with amazing costumes. Um, that she I think I think she she makes them all herself, and she'll come. I mean, they can cost four, you know, several thousand dollars, three, four, five thousand dollars each, and she'll bring four different costumes with her. So, and then you can see the, the we're trying to keep the same format. So, Jan, this is Jan's work. Here's the, the mime again. So did you have to, did you redo the, the 
change the fonts or anything in the introduction page so that they would all match or no, no, just we agreed on what font they would use. Or? Yeah, we agreed. We, we agreed on the font. And then um, the, the font information, all that layout information is in the XML file. Okay. So you just import that. I mean, there was literally there was I, I don't I don't remember having to do any editing. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, when, when I combined the uh, combined the three. So I, I basically um, created my book, made a copy of it, and then imported everything into that uh, copy. And uh, so I didn't destroy my book if something went wrong. Mm -hmm. You said you used Photoshop. What did you do in Photoshop besides editing your photos? Just just edited the photos and then uh, saved them off as uh, JPEGs at um, uh, minimal at, at the uh, minimal resolution of the minimal accepted resolution. I think at that time they they've changed their uh, resolution uh, now to require. Uh, well, I, I've been creating mine at 450 DPI. These, I think, uh, were all created at 350. Um, as they, they've updated their software, they've updated certain requirements and the, the DPI size uh, is, is one of those requirements. The, the only thing, it, th this photo here, um, I don't like and Melinda didn't like and we, uh, because it doesn't say anything about Venice, you know, and um, but we tried to convince John to change it, but he refused and so, like that was the agreement, you know, he, he had the final say. This, see this boat here? This, this is a vegetable boat. This boat is in um, Casino Royale, the, the um, uh, Daniel Craig, uh, uh, James Bond movie. It's in, it's, it's, it, there's a couple scenes where that, where you see that boat. And it's it's really about less than a hundred yards from the hotel that, uh, that I stay in every year. Oh, but the building that sank into the lagoon in, in Casino Royale. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This this is a place called Florian, which is a cafe that has been there since the 1600s, I think, and. Um, it's a gathering place for all the performers. Uh, during carnival, there's a certain time that the rest that the cafe is um, off limits to anyone except the performer. Um, and here's Melinda's, and you'll see a completely different aspect. It's the male female uh, 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 eye. I think is what you'll see. In, in, in the photographs. You can always, I think you can see some differences between the posing and the way she's capturing the performers. And then I never took anything like this. Yeah, the little details. Yeah, that well, that's exactly right. So it's the details that she focused in on. Again, more detail. More details. That's yeah. kind of cool. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I still see a lot of the uh, same performers. Uh, and this person right here is me. Oh, yeah, yeah, I can see that. Yeah. Uh, shoes. Yeah, yeah. This one's really colorful. I like this one. And she got the uh, the person uh, spinning the umbrella. Uh -huh. And this is me right here. There you go. <laughs> Well, instead of just seeing the finished photo, uh -huh. here's the story of the event that's going on and and how the performers line the streets and stuff. For someone who's never been there, I mean, that's right. interesting to see. 
What yeah. size is that book, Jim? I'm sorry. Uh, it's the large uh, landscape, so it's I don't know, uh, thirteen by whatever. I, I'd have to look. Uh, it, it's 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 a it's a pretty good sized book. Yeah. Um, and so then we did the little chow, you know, and and showed some closing photos. Um, and this is a mixture, some of mine, some of theirs. Okay. I think this was a Melinda photo. And then here we got the photographers. This is <laughs> so that's a fun project. Yeah, this is Jean and this is Melinda. And that's it. Hey, it's almost uh, 8 30. Okay. Uh, so 8 19. Uh, eight, so a uh, question do we, uh, uh, do you want to keep going with this? Do we have any show and tell? I think that we, yes, we do have show and tell. Then we should probably go ahead and do the show and tell. Okay. Well, let me, uh, let me do that. Let me check, make sure I've got stuff up here. You should. Um, pictures. Pictures. Share. Uh, I don't need motion. Just need text and images. And um, let me go here. So, um, okay, so this is Avian Pacific. Who would that be? Is that you, Frank? That'd be me. Yeah. All right. All right. So this was just a trip that I took with my wife in uh, February up to Pedras Blancas. Uh-huh. The elephant seals. Okay, that is an elephant seal. That's an elephant seal. Wow. Oh, love is proboscis. <laughs> <laughs> and this was at uh, Hearst uh, State Park. Uh, there were a couple of uh, young male elephant seals on the beach. And, uh, -huh. uh People walking all around them with their dogs. Very good. And of course, Hearst Castle. Yeah, I, I've not seen that from that view. I've never seen that view of it before. That's nice. Uh... I thought that was pretty cool. It kind of looks like a um... amusement park. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Disney World. It's done in pastels rather than a fo photograph. Yeah. was the our field trip to uh, Wasna for the Milky Way and that's Larry in the middle there with his strobe lighting things up. Yeah, that's pretty cool. I like that. Mm -hmm. That's uh, the tail lights from Larry's truck. <laughs> <laughs> Doing a little light painting there on the grass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's nice. I like that red. Yeah, looks different. Oh. And this was a, a visitor in my yard for about a week, uh, a couple of weeks ago. Is that a lynx or a bobcat? Bobcat. Oh my gosh, she's beautiful. This was at uh, four in the morning. Every morning she'd come a, a little bit earlier till uh, I think before the last meeting, my wife came in before the meeting wrapped up. Oh, the bobcat's in the backyard. And that was about 8.30. But uh, this was at four in the morning. I was just sitting in a lawn chair. And about 15 feet away. And she just let she just let you take her photo. Yeah. She's posing. Oh, she <laughs> is beautiful. so pretty. Oh my goodness. Wow. She looks like a young one, is she? Yeah. Wow. Looking for an easy meal, one of my birds or something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. But this was just from the lighting of my uh uh patio and from my balcony. Um, the lighting's good. Yeah. That's ISO of sixty four hundred. It's a nice, nice photo, that, Frank. Really, really nice captured it. for me. Yeah, that is nice. That is a good one. That's her in the Same shadows. One. Wow. That's wow. it. Okay. Oh, that's beautiful. Where was the sunset at? Uh, just up the street from me, and here in Orchid, it was. Uh, that was probably last year when we had some smoke in the air and then the fog was coming in at the same time. Yeah. 
Very good. Nice photos, Frank. Mm -hmm. Okay, so these are, it says Elaine. Yeah. Uh, this is the image that um, I did when we went uh, to on Wasna Road for the field trip. We walked across the bridge down the road, and this tree was, it was pretty difficult to capture it and the Milky Way because of uh, the angle of view we had, but we worked with it and I did a panel. That's uh, three images stitched together so that I nice. could get the tree and the Milky Way in the same frame. Oh, that's nice. Worked, yeah. worked, nice. worked, worked well. And then Ron and I went to uh, Port San Luis. Uh, we went with the meetup group and uh, I lost all my images somehow. And uh, so we decided it would be fun. We had so much fun. We decided it would be fun to go again anyway. And uh, these were the images that I was able to capture the second time I went. Yeah, I, I, I really like this photo, Elaine. Thank you. Yeah, it was very foggy that day. Well, you've got some really important things here. This person in the kayak, mm -hmm. um, of course, the bird up here, and then you've got this buoy over here. Mm -hmm. um, this this person is, I think, well, the bird too, but I think this is really important for the photo. Uh, I really. Uh, otherwise, you've just got big empty space. Yeah. 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 The bird, the bird is good, mm -hmm. but this just kind of cements it. I think having the kayak here. I debated whether or not to take the bird out. I wasn't real happy with the bird, but I thought it, it did fill in some space. And yeah. Oh, I I well, well it, it gives, uh, it fills in the, 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 um, the vertical. Yeah. You know, uh, you know, it's nothing, nothing wrong with having a lot of sky, but this is a, uh, you know, basically a. a it's just about nothing. on the rule of thirds too. Yeah. Pretty yeah. much. Pretty much it is. <laughs> There's another buoy out there. It's hard to see. On um, on the right side of. Oh yeah, yeah. It's very. It's right over here. Yeah, it was just so foggy. It was, but I loved it. I love the fog. Yeah, yeah. I didn't. I I didn't notice that until you mentioned it. But if this was a larger image, you would see that better. Mm -hmm. mm. And the sailboat. And that, that's well, the um, that's the Port San Luis Pier. That's from. Port San Luis Pier, looking towards um, Avila. Avila. Yeah. At the Cal Poly Pier back yeah. there. I, I I like that. I like the pier in the background. Mm -hmm. And then that's just at the very end of the pier uh, in Port San Luis, looking straight out mm -hmm. at the buoys they have out there. And I liked the negative space in this one. So yeah, yeah, it works well. Same thing was. Yeah, you know, I, I was just going to mention something. These I like that you've really done both of these, all all of these. You've captured the fog really well. Really, okay. really works. I like that this one doesn't have any uh, horizon, you know, yeah. or noticeable horizon. This one does obviously, and mm -hmm. this one does, but um, uh, without the horizon, I, I think it's very effective. Yeah, and then the light started hitting the. Um... The horizon on that last one. Yeah, 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 you can see. And this guy was, um, I just, I liked his look and um, I got brave enough to ask him if I could take his photo. And I took his photo and it was posed and I didn't care for it that much. And we talked a little bit and I walked away and did some other photos. And when I came back, he was working, and so I thought, well, that's more interesting. So I mm -hmm. set up quite a distance from him and took his picture, and he looked up and saw me. So that's yeah. why he gave me that little. And he's 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 about to be attacked by that seagull. <laughs> <laughs> and I just thought it was interesting to see some activity there. Yeah, yeah, that's nice. And the and I couldn't uh, get away without getting some wildlife. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think that's the last one, right? Yeah. I think that's so, nice. yeah. Okay, so then we've got Harold.
Tell us about it, Harold. Oh, uh, well, you know, just enjoying lunch in Morro Bay, and this happens to be something they brought up for lunch, and uh, uh, it was really colorful, so I took a picture of it. I like to take pictures of food, so anyway, I thought it was very interesting, so. Yeah, yeah I, I think I was with you. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> that is very colorful. Um, this picture was taken in Turkey. Um, Tony and I like to walk around sometimes at night because it was the only time it was cool enough to go outside and there's all these vendors selling all kinds of stuff. And this guy was selling corn. And I just like the smoke coming up and just, you know, of course everybody's wearing masks. It was last year. So um, this is around the Blue Mosque in uh, Istanbul. Okay. Well, I really like this photo. I think it's great. Yeah, I you like know, the the light and, and like you said, the, the smoke. So there's, there's movement in the photo and, um, you know, and, and, the, and the lighting and the colors are just really, really great. The Blue Mosque? Blue Mosque, yeah. And, you know, believe it or not, I took this handheld, which is amazing. Um, yeah, that is amazing. Uh, but it turned out so well because I was like, oh, gosh, is that, I really want to try to capture the colorful uh, fountains that were going up. And this is Hagia Sophia, which uh -huh. has been in the news a lot lately for... Um, if they turned it back into a mosque recently, so it's been in the news quite a bit. Um, but anyway, it was just taking. Oh, so, so and this... the fountain there changed colors. So I have lots of different colors. I have blues and uh -huh. yellows. <laughs> it was this really is... cool to see different colors come up. Yeah. So this is the Sophia. I have Sophia. Yeah. 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 I've been. I've been there and and uh, the um, the blue mosque, both. <laughs> And um, my wife has been mentoring some girls, and so uh, she said, well, you take some pictures of them for their senior uh, classes. And so I've never really done poetry before, but this is one of the pictures I took of them recently. Um, just, and I really like the black and white. The color one's actually good too, but I just, I just like the contrast in this color when I did this. Well, th I'm sure they're very happy with their portrait. You did really a good job. That's beautiful. Well, thank you. Yeah, Harold showed me uh, the photos that he made of these girls, and they're re they're really really good, especially considering that he said he has nev never made uh, portraits before. Um, yeah, they're yes. really really well done, and this is just a, a good example. <laughs> and of course, everybody knows where this is, right? You see mm -hmm. the, but um... Istanbul again? No, no. See this this winter we decided to go there and i thought you know there wouldn't be that many people there but it took us an hour to get into the park even with reservations i was like you got to be kidding me yeah uh, but anyway i just kind of like this little girl walking through the snow and you know i thought it was interesting so uh, and the sun didn't come up for just like a second so i really got lucky that she was walking by and the sun came up because it was pretty much overcast the whole time we were there so yeah, you got a little bit of sun in the picture, but not much. Yeah, you got a little bit of blue sky there in the clouds, so that's nice. And this is on the Monterey coasts. Uh, there was a storm coming in, and I happened to be up there. And um, anyway, I just I like the colors of the waves and stuff. I took this, I think, at a pretty uh, low ISO, but um, anyway, I just like the. It looks kind of dreamy, so. Yeah, that wave crashing on the rock is is great. Mm -hmm. Beautiful colors. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Oh, and this is, I took this in Morro Bay of uh, the mother and otters, and I was actually talking to the lady, um, one of the rangers there, and I don't know if you guys know this, but they don't have a set schedule when they have babies. They can have babies all year long, which oh. I didn't know that. So, because I always thought, oh, you maybe go February and March, you go find babies, but. Uh, I guess you can go there any time of the year and find babies. And anyway, I really like this mother and baby together. So yeah, that's really cool. So, yeah, that's nice. Yeah. Okay. Nice and fluffy, dry fur. <laughs> okay. So, and I'll show you. Wonderful. Yeah, those were great, uh, Harold. I'll show you some of mine. <laughs> these, are all, these are all up at Port San Luis, and. Um, uh, they're, they're, um, well, let's see what they are. They're all, all boats. Mm. Wow. Wow. Oh, 
no no texture used used in this. Yeah, right. Yeah. Show me how to do that. That is so cool. No color added. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Beautiful. Yeah. Wow. Very pretty. Appropriating paintings, aren't you? I'm sorry. What? You're appropriating paintings into this. Uh, yes. As textures. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, um, people, well, I'll, sh I'll show you one in a, in a minute. And so these are all at, uh, at uh, Port San Luis. No, they're nice. They just, I love the, the textures that you chose for these. They just really yeah. give it another dimension i guess mm -hmm. yeah, textures yeah. and the colors yeah really yeah, nice. so, so i i use the the texture files and then um you know i play around with the um blend mode uh and then i'll uh, you know do the standard curve to change luminosity or whatever uh, uh and maybe the uh, contrast uh <laughs> control but uh also um i put uh, a lot of times i'll use the uh uh, what do you call it? Uh, color lookup uh, uh, control to, uh, to to get the color exactly the way I want it. How? What's the color lookup control? Uh, if you look, if you if you're in Photoshop and you've got your adjustments palette open, um, up there uh, there is a color color lookup uh, control, and what that does is it goes out. It's got a lookup table. That um, uh, that it, that it uh, brings into the photo, and uh, the the lookup table has got a number of different look lookup tables. Uh, some that emulate uh, Kodak, some that emulate um, uh, uh, I don't know uh, uh, Fuji. Uh, some that, uh, emulate they've got one called Night Today or Day Day <laughs> Night, uh, and it, it just changes the colors. Uh, because the lookup table goes through, uh, the program goes through, it looks at the colors and it finds one that uh, that has a corresponding color uh, in the yeah. lookup table and it substitutes that color or, or the luminosity, I don't know exactly how it works, but it substitutes it for the, uh, for the mm -hmm. pixel color that was in the original image. And you find that under which uh, Adjust, uh, You open up the adjustments uh, uh, layer uh, so, so if you go up to, uh, what is it? You go up to Windows, uh, not Windows. Uh, no, no. You go to the up to Adjustments. Uh, you open up the Adjustments palette, and you'll have to look. It's on the right hand side, down about two, three rows, something like that. You put your mouse cursor over, and it'll say Lookup Table. Hmm. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. And I've shown this one. Um, People said, I've had at least three people said it looks uh, the sky looks like a uh, uh, J M W Turner the the great uh, English uh, mm -hmm. uh, painter and that's because it is <laughs> <laughs> so so um, I, I went up on on Google and um, uh, downloaded a lot of his paintings and uh, then. Um, of course, he has figures and things like that. I, I, you know, boats and you know all kinds of stuff. So I'll, I'll remove that. And uh, uh, this one was actually the. Uh, I think this was actually the. The 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 sea, the, uh, and I in, I flipped it vertically so uh, that I made the sea the sky. The same thing here. This is another Turner. Um, so, are these still uh, Port San Luis boats? Yeah, these, these are all Port. Well, I, let's see. I think these are. No. Um, yeah, these are all Port San Luis. I don't think. <clears throat> yeah, I think these are all. Yeah, these are all Port San Luis. No, actually, this is this is uh, Morro Bay. Okay. Yeah, that's Morro Bay. Wow. And that that, I've that never one seen I, everybody looking like that. <laughs> yeah. Well uh that one I made with uh 
a, a point and shoot camera, a, a, a Canon G10. Hmm. So that's it. Very nice. Yeah, very nice. Those are nice. Thanks. Yeah, I've been playing with textures, trying to to marry things together, and I've deleted about everything I've tried. <laughs> <laughs> and there's a knack to it. It takes a lot of time. It, it, it's a lot of trial and error. So, okay. it is 840. Yeah. So, anyone who wants to stay on can stay on. Uh, I'm, I'm meeting gonna is, Go ahead. Go ahead, Alan. I said, the meeting is officially over, but uh, so you know, I guess we can stop recording. Uh,